What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the high grade Gundam Zabanya from Gundam 00 Awakening of the Trailblazer. The Guardian Angel of Hell, this Gundam is designed by someone paranoid enough to store a gun in every single fence post of the lawn. Eight runners and a sizable sticker sheet comprise this kit's contents. The build is your standard high grade affair, nothing too advanced while being fairly straightforward. It's still pretty enjoyable to put together thanks to the structure, however the high sticker use is fairly annoying, so is the green and grey pieces susceptibility to knob marks. It'd be a good challenge for beginners, but this is a build that you can't get away without double cuts on the gates and fastidious sanding. Once completed, the high grade Gundam Zabanya is… a bit iffy to say the least. I'm really fond of the core body, don't get me wrong part of the reason being the nailed anime accuracy, but I'm still not too sure what to feel about the holster bits hanging from the butt. Full disclosure though, this particular one is reconstructed from the final battle of Banya's part, but both share the same stickers for the eyes, forehead gem and camera, white bits on the chest, green slabs on top of the shoulders, grey on the shoulders and arm missile pods, grey on the sides of the shins, as well as the GN condensers. Those used on the shoulders and arms are awful and should be painted instead, alongside the shoulder scope details and tops of the dummy holsters. Other than that and matters of taste, all the Zabanya needs are painted GN condensers and light panel lining for good out of box presentation. The Zabanya stands at 13cm tall so it's the same height as the average Gundam. No illusions of size are at play but the holster bits can make it wider than it is tall when fully flared out, so it's still a fairly large kit. Articulation begins with removing the fence posts for convenience, followed by a double ball jointed head that can roll pretty well and rotate all the way. Arms can swivel out decently far, roll, and rotate all the way in their sockets. The missile pod has a flap that can move out for the arm, but perching it would yield better movement range. They can also rotate at the bicep, bend decently on the double elbow joint, swivel at the knuckle, as well as roll and rotate at the wrist. Ab crunches are next to impossible, while the waist can rotate all the way around. Front skirts and side skirts move, while the back skirt is stationary. Legs can swivel laterally together, as well as do the funky dance, followed by a near full front split and full side splits. There is a thigh swivel, double jointed knees, movable ankle flap, ball jointed ankles, with a hinge that can provide great swinging and deep sideboards rocking. Finally, the arms on the butt can flap and rotate at the base and lock into one of three positions, while the holster for the holster bits can swivel and rotate in a specific position. Altogether, the articulation of the Gundam Zabanya is great, notwithstanding the bulk. It might be hard to get your hand around the mounted holster bits, but the sturdy structure and wide range of movement makes the Zabanya quite fun to pose. For gimmicks, the head crest could be lifted up, while the V-fin can be dropped down to convert the Zabanya into sniper mode, and it is a cool feature I cannot get enough of. If you want to go even further, you can insert the shoulder armor into the shorter slots to open up the shoulder scopes, which is for some reason made, yet exempt from the instructions. Still, an awesome feature. However, there are no leg scope attachments to use with the slots they are located at. Additionally, the missile pods on the chest and knees can open up. Missiles need to be painted, but at least the feature is somewhat there, held on by friction. You can purge all of the missile pods if you wish, but the result feels… half naked to put it mildly. Accessories start with the sole pair of holding hands. They can be used with the only handheld weapons included, the GN Rifle Bit 2s. They're fairly decent guns with stickers with a scope and the blade, otherwise they're standard guns that can be held solidly in the hands. If pistols are more your thing, the rifles can split into the GN pistol bits by removing the extension. They look cool and seamless, while the blade can finally be used sensibly. The rifles can also be stored in the true holster bits after collapsing the scope in the handle and removing the prongs on the barrel. It's cool that they can be actually stored in the holsters, but the need to remove and keep track of the prongs is a bit annoying. Speaking of which, the GN holster bits are mounted via a very solid slide lock mechanism, and they come in groups of 2, 2, and 1 per set, and the sets of 2 are all dummies. They connect to each other with sturdy hooked pegs, but sometimes too sturdy and can easily break when not careful. Finally, a clear adapter is included for the real holster bits to be displayed in their defensive formation. 
However, you will have to buy a version of the Hydric Keratom Gundam to have a stand for them. And even if you do, they only work reliably on the third slot from the top. The holster bits are too long to go any lower, and too heavy to go any higher without the stand falling over easily. Surely Bandai won't go bankrupt by including a custom display base for the holster bits alone, but alas, they expect you to have the Keratom, so what could you do? I don't know where to start rounding up with the high grade on the Zabanya because it's honestly a kit that has good potential and spots that really can't be helped. It looks good and is fun to pose, while well, this particular one at least, and since it uses the universal joints, is easily customizable with other kits as well. The rifles are well done in all aspects minus the need to take out the prongs for storage, but the holsters feel like an afterthought. From the dummies to the lazy display option, they're honestly just there to be there. And I won't bother mentioning the other missing features lest people think I'm nitpicking, but at least the high grade gun of Zabanya is a good kit at its core. I'll rank it at suit yourself, but as I mentioned earlier, this is rebuilt from the final battle version. So whether you'd like to go for the retail one or the final battle one, given that you want to pick one up in the first place, it's up to you. But hey, at least the final battle version provides a shortcut to making the final battle Zabanya with only real holster and rifle bits. And that basically wraps it up for this review, so thank you all so much for watching it. If you did like it, please be sure to drop a like, comment, and also subscribe for more. Gunplay reviews, gunplay news, and the like. Turn on notifications for future content alerts if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.